In the jungles of Haiti, they speak his name in whispers, lest somehow they offend him. For then, tis said, the crops will wither, and the sun will forever cease to shine. In the shadowed back alleys of New Orleans, they speak his name in awe. For tis said, he was old when the mountains were young, that he cannot be harmed, that he can never die. Throughout the world they speak his name, in praise, in wonder, in reverence, in fear, but never, never in jest. His name is... One evening, in Port-au-Prince, a plane cut through the thick and humid air, carrying an important doctor who was there on behalf of the United Nations. An escort was quick to bring the doctor off the tarmac, as a local faction was violently opposed to the UN's presence within Haiti's borders. However, their efforts were not enough, and a group of terrorists moved in to attack the well-meaning clinical pathologist. The gang attempted to take the doctor hostage when suddenly, they heard the sounds of a voodoo drum, and were alarmed to see the presence of smoke. After many long months away, the legendary figure known as Brother Voodoo emerged, striking fear in the hearts of the attacking terrorists. The hero was able to make quick work of the assailants by possessing one among them, and using him to take out the rest of the gang, thus saving a very grateful doctor and his escort in the process. The encounter proved memorable to Brother Voodoo, for months ago, at the same airport, this hero arrived in Haiti, not as Brother Voodoo, but as the far more ordinary Jericho Drum. Then, Drum was an acclaimed academic, a published author, noted scholar, and well-regarded psychologist. He had come to Haiti to visit the home he grew up in at the behest of his brother Daniel, having left the country and been away for almost 20 years, studying and working abroad. Jericho and his brother grew up in Haiti, suffering under impoverished conditions. In spite of this, the two siblings found a lot of happiness together in their childhood. Though, as proven when Jericho was attacked touring his old home as an adult, he clearly had to learn a thing or two about defending himself growing up in these slums. Though Jericho noted that his home village largely looked the same, at night he could sense a strange new silence in the air, one he felt born of a fear he did not recognize from his childhood. When he came to Daniel living with their aunt, he found his brother deathly ill and claiming to have been afflicted by a curse. Jericho, a man of science, was dismissive of this on two levels. One, he no longer believed in voodoo magic, viewing it as nothing more than a product of local legend. Two, Daniel was the Hungan, the voodoo priest of Haiti for most of his life. So even if all the voodoo beliefs were real, most beings would lack the power to afflict Jericho's brother with a curse. Yet Daniel insisted it was true and that this was the work of a sinister and powerful Loa given mortal form, Dembala, the serpent god, who had taken over the local village. The great Hungan attempted to stand up to this being after he first appeared months ago, leading to Daniel becoming cursed. While the ailing brother explained all of this, Dembala and his followers arrived, and performed a ritual to finish Daniel drum off once and for all. As they did this, Daniel used the last moments of his life to beg Jericho to save his people, telling his brother to seek help from a man named Papa Jumbo before suddenly passing away. When a grief-stricken Jericho confronted Dembala over this, he was humiliated and badly beaten by the powerful Loa. Upon recovering, Jericho decided to listen to his brother's final request, and sought out Papa Jumbo, all while carrying his brother's corpse along with him. Drum barely survived what turned out to be a deadly and arduous journey in seeking out the Elder, ultimately being rescued by Jumbo himself and nursed back to help. However, Jumbo had no interest in helping Jericho or protecting the village from Dumbala, as he had grown old and could tell his time on this world was long past over. Instead, he offered to train Drum in becoming Brother Voodoo, one who would be capable of defending the village and beyond. Papa Jumbo trained Jericho in the art of Voodoo, a force of voodoo magic representing good compared to the darkness that is wielded by Dambala and others of evil. Drum proved unusually adept at learning these skills, learning faster and more than any other who had studied under Jumbo before. Jericho learned command over all living things, animal or plant, the ability to speak out to Loa when needed, and an immunity over fire. However, this was all Jumbo could teach, and both felt it may not have been enough to defeat Dambala. 
At Jericho's insistence, he agreed to try one more thing, though it came at great risk, with Jericho possibly losing his soul in the process. Drum, desperate to avenge his brother at any cost, quickly agreed to go through this mysterious ritual. Using his brother's bones, Jericho watched as the sky suddenly darkened around him, and as per Papa Jumbo's instructions, he began to dance. Together, Drum and Jumbo were able to summon the Loa, the spirit of what had once been Daniel Drum, and permanently bonded it to Jericho's body. Jericho survived the experience, but did briefly die at the moment he was bound to his brother's powerful Mungan soul. His body was forever marked by the occasion, with his forehead adorned with a symbol that once belonged to Daniel, and a distinctive streak of white now ran across Jericho's hair. With a worthy successor now born, Papa Jumbo, who had lived long past his time just to ensure this would be, passed away in Jericho's arms. And on that night, Brother Voodoo was born. With his new formidable powers further enhanced by Daniel's possession, Along with an ability for Daniel to leave Jericho's body and possess others at will, Brother Voodoo was finally able to confront Dumbala with confidence. The Loa attempted to summon serpents that would slay Jericho, but he was no match for Brother Voodoo's new powers, who was able to wordlessly turn the snakes on their master, and the serpent god was killed by the beasts. Brother Voodoo was left content with the knowledge that at long last Daniel had been avenged, when he was then approached by a kindly old man named Bamboo, who said he was duty-bound to serve the one who wore Dambala's amulet, a holy relic he held in great esteem. With the serpent god defeated, the blessed amulet was bestowed on Jericho, who Bamboo now wished to serve. Though Jericho was reluctant at first to take on a servant, he quickly agreed to accept the help, noting that Brother Voodoo would have a great deal of work to do in the future. Jericho and Bamboo moved on to New Orleans, where they found a home in the French Quarter an old manor embedded with mystical power. Though initially viewed in America as a psychologist who turned into a strange voodoo-based fraud, the hero soon became a legend across Haiti, leading to rumors the work with Papa Jumbo had rendered Jericho immortal, while his victory over Dambala and other heroic deeds earned him respect among the people. Thanks to his bonding with Daniel and with some practice, Brother Voodoo's immunity to fire also developed into a mastery over the element itself and he was able to summon and control it at will. More than one foe found a wall of flame appear before them, and Brother Voodoo emerged through it, charging towards them. Not long after his adventure at the airport, Jericho was contacted by an owner of a factory in Haiti, which found itself attacked by Zuvembis, soulless, undead creatures which were apparently led by Baron Samedi himself, infamous Lord of the Dead. Brother Voodoo went to investigate, only to be overwhelmed by the Zuvembis after they ambushed him from beneath the ground, and the creatures proved invulnerable to Daniel Drum's possession. Jericho was sworn just as Baron Samedi rose up before him, and the hero lost consciousness. When he awoke, Drum was shocked to see the Baron in league with a group of operatives from the evil organization known as AIM. The Baron was working with this global organization of criminal scientists to kidnap local Haitians and turn them into Zavembis through a device that drains their minds and spirits, turning them into loyal servants of AIM. They attempted to do the same to Brother Voodoo, but Jericho had a lizard damage the device while pretending it worked on him, tricking Samedi into freeing the superhero. In the ensuing conflict, Brother Voodoo managed to free the Zavembis from AIM control and restore them to normal, all while Samedi's headquarters collapsed around the Baron and the AIM scientists. Returning to New Orleans, Brother Voodoo came upon a woman drowning in the Mississippi River. In a show of just how much his physiology had been enhanced by Voodoo, navigating the heavy currents of the mighty river was no difficulty to Jericho. But when he approached the young woman, she was panicking and in her struggle, Jericho nearly lost his grip on her, causing her to almost drown within moments of being rescued. This is actually something that real drowning people do. I think this moment's neat and uh, Interesting reminder that if you are ever finding yourself rescuing a drowning person, be sure not to let them drown you too. Luckily, Brother Voodoo fought quickly and used his powers over all living things to put the panicking woman to sleep, so that he could safely bring her to shore unharmed. Jericho brought her home to the manor to help her recover where she woke and introduced herself as Laura Lee Tate, daughter of Samuel Tate, chief detective of New Orleans police. She worked as a nurse at Delta General Hospital, 
where she received a suspicious package containing a black rooster. Driving home that night, she was accosted by men in black robes and a gruesome face that emerged from some sinister fog that appeared out of nowhere. The car veered into the river, leading to Brother Voodoo's discovery of Loralee on the verge of death. Suddenly, the same group of men stormed the manor, violently knocking out Bamboo. When Jericho tried to call upon his brother's spirit to assist in the battle, the same sinister fog crept into the manor and knocked Brother Voodoo out cold. When he woke back up, Loralee was gone, so Jericho sought out a blind seer named Mama Limbo to help him find her. Brother Voodoo was told that he would have to go to the castle of the Forsaken, an old home located at a place called Headtaker's Hill. Mama Limbo warned the hero that such an action would be dangerous, but Jericho was determined to find Loralee at any cost. For one as powerful as Brother Voodoo, it was an easy feat infiltrating his home, where Jericho confronted the owner, a man named Desmond Drew. Using his telepathic control over others, Jericho calmed the man down so he was not alarmed at the intruder's presence, and Desmond offered the Voodoo Master a drink. Jericho declined, stating that he abstains from alcohol. Speaking with Desmond, it soon became clear the man was not involved in the kidnapping of Loralee, as Brother Voodoo's power over nature makes it difficult to lie to him. Still, something in Desmond's attitude rang false to Jericho Drum. Leaving the hill, Brother Voodoo was suddenly attacked by both the men in black and the mysterious fog. This time, however, Daniel was successfully able to take control of one of the attacking men, knocking the others down for a moment. The fog, interestingly, did nothing as Jericho stood his ground before it, but the men in black robes quickly recovered and knocked the hero unconscious. Brother Voodoo woke tied to an inverted cross beside Loralee, and a man dressed as a black rooster in front of him. The costumed individual introduced himself as Black Talon, a faithful servant of the demon worshipped by this cult. Thinking fast, Jericho summoned Daniel, who possessed one of the cultists, and freed Brother Voodoo. Jericho nearly managed to set the whole ritual room on fire, defeat the cultists, and escape with Loralee, but it was eventually cornered and once again knocked out. When he woke back up, again chained to the same inverted cross in the exact same situation he started out in, this time he found Mama Limbo watching him. She revealed she was behind all of this just so she could use both Jericho and Loralee as offerings to their demonic Dark Lord. Thinking over his experiences so far, Brother Voodoo broke his chains and attacked the cult, all while explaining to them that they've been tricked. Mama Limbo had been deceiving them all with voodoo, controlling the fog herself while hypnotizing the others into seeing and believing what she desired. The old woman confirmed this was indeed the case, as the ritual was not really about any sort of demon, but rather an attempt to restore the woman's youth, by stealing the life essence of Loralee and Jericho. However, before Mama Limbo could complete the ritual, the cross, damaged by Brother Voodoo's second escape, collapsed directly on the seer, killing her immediately. Black Talon, revealing himself as Mama Limbo's son, Desmond Drew, was devastated to see this happen. The rest of the cult, however, was finally free of the illusions and viciously attacked Desmond for his association with Mama Limbo. Jericho could only flee with Loralee and lock the mob inside the ritual chamber while the authorities arrived. Samuel Tate, the young woman's father who initially blamed Brother Voodoo for her disappearance, was the first to arrive on the scene, discovering his daughter alive and unharmed thanks to Brother Voodoo. And that's the story of how Brother Voodoo came to be, with his powers, home, and the initial history established from here, he would go on to exist all across the Marvel Universe. Next time we talk about this character, we'll go over his very first tie-in with another superhero a little figure known as Spider-Man.